Have you tried to take a deep breath and found that you just can't seem to get there? Or maybe you're in yoga class and you're trying to get that deep ocean breath and you're just like, I can't make the same noise as Jane who's next door to me here. Well, then this video is for you because today we are talking about how to take a deep breath and not only that, but what symptoms could you be having if you're not actually breathing properly? I'm Dr. Amy with Physical Therapy for Everybody, and our goal here is to help people live an active, healthy, and confident lifestyle without pain medication or surgery, which obviously means you need to know how to breathe. Breathing is so foundational. Breathing and sleeping, right? Because if you're not sleeping, you're not healing. That's one thing I say all the time. But if you can't take a deep breath, it affects literally everything. Um, not only does it affect your anxiety and your stress level, it literally affects how your body functions, if muscles are able to relax, how your lymphatic drainage happens. So if you're having swelling in your hands or your feet that doesn't go away overnight, it's probably because you're not breathing properly. All of these things can become a problem if you're not breathing properly. So it is really, it is, talk about at the core of the matter. This is literally it. So if you feel like you're not able to take a deep breath, you've tried before, you've done all these different techniques, and this is a video that you wanna be watching because we'll explain what's going on, and then the next video will demonstrate how to actually see if you're getting that deep breath and some tips and ideas to help you if you feel like it's difficult um, for you to be able to do it because sometimes we have patients come in and. And they've tried, they've tried working on their breathing and they just, they just can't seem to do it. So we've got some ideas for you in the next video on how to do that. But first off, what actually happens when you take a deep breath? So when you use your deep breath, so that deep belly breath, it actually is the diaphragm that's working. So the diaphragm is kind of this dome shaped muscle or some people describe it as kind of a parachute shape and it sits on the bottom of the ribs. So it would be like the floor of the rib cage if, if you could think of it that way. It attaches to the front ribs, to the back ribs, and then obviously it's in the middle in between. So it keeps your lungs away from your abdominal cavity. It separates those two things. And it's, it's a pretty big, thick muscle, right? Because it's gotta get the ribs moving in order to get that deep inspiration and get that you know air into the lungs and the oxygen into the blood and all that kind of stuff, which obviously, again, very core and very critical. So the diaphragm is a, is a muscle which means it contracts and it relaxes. So for some people, their diaphragm will get contracted and it won't be able to then relax appropriately. You may see this if you notice that your diaphragm, um, or sorry, your rib cage is very narrow. So not that you should have a really flared out rib cage, like it really sticks out to the side, like further than your hips, that's not normal. But if you notice that it's narrower than your hip bones, then you probably have a really, really tight diaphragm. Also, if you notice like the ribs in the front, if they're kind of, they should be pointing basically out to the side, a little bit down, but kind of out to the side. If you notice that they're pointing more down than out to the side, you probably have a tight diaphragm and it's gonna be really, really hard to take a deep breath. So why is this so important? Well, as I mentioned, it's important for literally everything. Obviously oxygenating your blood, which is key because you, you need the oxygen and the blood to do all the healing and all the things, right? But also it, it, it allows for the lymphatic system to drain. So that's all the garbage that's in your body that needs to be cleaned out. All of that goes through the lymphatic system and we want all of that to be able to clean out because if it doesn't, then that means that you're gonna be getting um, swelling or edema in your hands or your feet. And that's not something you wanna start dealing with because it, it can get pretty bad. If you've ever seen people who have kind of like tree trunk legs, 
That's when the edema has built up over time. It becomes much more difficult to get everything moving correctly when you're at that point than when you first notice it. So if you're starting to notice that you have some edema buildup in your um, hands or your feet, you definitely need to see somebody about that because it's way easier to deal with at the beginning than when you get to the point where you have tree trunks. Okay, so that's a really important thing. But what I've noticed in the clinic that people commonly don't know about is the fact that if your diaphragm's not working correctly, you are probably gonna have neck and shoulder tension and pain. And here's the reason why. These muscles up here in your neck are called your accessory muscles of respiration. So they also help you breathe. So the diaphragm, that's its job. That's what it does. Now you've got other muscles in your neck and shoulders that do lots of things, right? They move your head back and forth and up and down. They help lift your shoulders up, all those kinds of things, right? And that's their job. However, they also will help with respiration when you're in a fight or flight situation. So you see a bear and you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta run away from the bear. And you're gonna wanna open up those lungs as much as possible to get as much airflow in, get that heart pumping, get everything, those vital organs, a lot of room to move. So these muscles can help lift those ribs up. However, in our current society, we tend to live in kind of a fight or flight environment because it feels like there's constantly stressors that are just bombarding us either through our phone or through the TV or through work or through your children or through all of the above. So what happens is that we tend to live in that fight or flight mode, which means these muscles up in here stay tight all the time. When that's tight all the time, we get neck stiffness and pain. But also when they're activated, it makes it harder to activate the diaphragm. So then you're stuck in this catch 22 where you kind of got stuck into this pattern and it one is one, it becomes one that you really intentionally have to shift. So that's why practicing deep breathing is so important. If you're sitting here while you're watching this video and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I did three deep breaths and yeah, I'm good. Um, I encourage you to watch the next video and try doing the exercises that we described because most people in today's society are not actually maintaining that deep breathing and it's definitely going to affect your health in the long term. Now, if you've started to notice already that you do have neck stiffness or pain, then I definitely encourage you to start these uh, deep breathing exercises on a daily basis it should not take that long for you to start to notice that things are calming down. However, I will also tell you, as someone whose diaphragm gets really, really tight, um, my rib cage will get to the point where it's almost straight up and down because that diaphragm gets so tight and I get a lot of neck and shoulder pain into my left side. So I have to go in and release my diaphragm to get everything moving correctly and then that neck and shoulder pain in general will go away. So if you've been struggling with neck and shoulder pain for a while and you're, you know, you've, you've seen everybody, you've tried everything, but they've only been focused on this area, then you might be, sorry, I mean, yours could be on the right, right? I'm just saying mine, that's mine, yeah, there you go. Um, you may be somebody who really may benefit from working with this deep breathing. Now, if you do it for a couple of weeks and you're not noticing any change, that's definitely the time that you wanna see a specialist physical therapist because sometimes your diaphragm can get so stuck that you have to have someone else help you actually manually release it. And there are techniques that we use and it, it depends on a lot of factors which technique we use and it really doesn't matter. You just need to know that you're seeing a specialist because they'll be able to find the best technique that will work for you. Once that diaphragm's released, everything else is able to be in the correct position and you'll stop suffering with that neck tension and pain. Now, you gotta keep practicing too. So you can't just do this once and expect it to go away and stay away. We, again, constant stressors that are bombarding us all day long from all these different sources. It's really important to try to maintain this deep breathing all day long. Yes, this is actually, this deep breathing pattern is actually how we were designed to be able to breathe. That's why we have such a big muscle called the diaphragm 
that allows us to breathe so easily when we activate it. So it's really, really important to maintain this breathing throughout the day. Now I know, I know it's hard. I mean, I've just told you a minute ago about how my diaphragm gets so tight that whoop, my ribs go up like that, right? I know, it is super challenging. However, the goal should be to keep that deep breathing all day long. So when people are starting out, I recommend that they practice once or twice a day. So usually I'll have people do it before they get out of bed and then when they go to bed because what other time are you laying down, right? It just makes it really easy. Once you get more used to it and used to the techniques, and we'll talk about this more in the next video, but just to let you know, you can do them when you're sitting up, you can do them when you're standing, you can do them when you're walking, right? That's, that's how we're designed, is to be able to use this diaphragm and do this deep breathing all the time. But you gotta kind of remind yourself because your body will forget over time, right? You'll get busy, you're working on the computer, you're carrying grocery bags, you got your heavy purse, whatever it is, driving in traffic. Um, and eventually you'll forget to do that deep breathing. So you just need to gently remind yourself. Please, I encourage you to not get mad at yourself if you are not deep breathing correctly, okay? It's really important to gently remind body, hey body, remember we're trying to switch to a different pattern and we want to encourage more of that normal breathing. And just start doing a couple reps and then your body will take over and probably 15 minutes, an hour, two hours later, it'll stop and it'll go into that shallow breathing and you'll feel the shoulders hunching up and the neck getting tight. Then just gently remind your body of what you are encouraging it to do. You can change this pattern over time. It does take A, practice, and B, a really intentional um, message to your body of, hey, we wanna switch how we're breathing. I promise you, it will make a huge difference. And especially for those of my friends out there who suffer with anxiety, we're gonna talk about this more in a later video, but deep breathing is really a calming technique because there's actually a nerve that goes through the diaphragm that helps to get stimulated when we do that deep breathing and it helps to calm the system down. So I, I can guarantee you it will work for you. It does take persistence in practice and it does take a very intentional mindset but you need to be kind to yourself because our society has taught us to breathe in a totally different way and we get kind of wrapped up in that rat race and that craziness and all of that stuff. So be kind to yourself, go watch the next video, practice your deep breathing and watch a lot of your symptoms calm down and relax. If you have any questions about this video or any of the videos we made, we encourage you to drop a comment below because we definitely would like um, ideas for new videos and to be able to answer all of your questions. And if you want to see when those vi next videos are published, click the subscri subscribe button. There you go. Have a great day, everyone.